Hello everybody, my name is Zen, and welcome to the third episode in our short series of beginner guides for Skyforge. Previously, we discussed what the upper and lower ascension atlases were, how to unlock new classes, and what sparks are used for. In this episode, we will be discussing class ability loadouts, impulse damage, and what vectors do once you unlock them in the ascension atlas. In Skyforge, you have a limited amount of abilities that you can use at any given time, and you will eventually unlock more abilities than you can fit onto your bar. This is where loadouts come in. There will be situations where you need to decide between two similar abilities. Sometimes, it's as simple as one being more oriented for player vs player combat, and either that does or doesn't suit your needs. Other times, you'll have to make a choice between buffing your group as a support or having yourself deal more damage. It's these choices that determine what your loadout will be. As a brief reminder, you'll unlock all new class abilities and talents in the specific lower atlases for those classes. If you're having trouble choosing what abilities to use, simply take a moment to read through them all. You'll notice certain abilities synergize well with others, and you'll be able to start formulating a loadout through the process of elimination. This is especially prevalent with passive talents. At the very max, you can only utilize 10 passive talents, but there are 20 to choose from. The basic rule of thumb is to choose the passives that will buff the skills you are using, and to choose the skills that meet your needs. Are you leveling up in an open region and clearing large packs of enemies? Maybe you should try using a loadout that has a few large area damage abilities to kill them all quicker, and passive talents that make those abilities stronger. You can reset your loadout at any time to try new abilities, but it will cost you sparks of transformation. These sparks are also used in large quantities to unlock classes in the upper atlas. You can accumulate sparks of transformation by simply playing specific content or getting them off the market under various. I won't comment specifically on which loadouts are good and bad in this guide, simply because game balance will frequently change, and a loadout that may be good today may not be good the next time a patch comes. While you're reading through all of your abilities, you'll notice some abilities will say that they consume an impulse charge. This is something we briefly mentioned in the first episode of this series when we were talking about the primary stat of spirit, which increases the amount of impulse damage you do. Basically, specific abilities will consume this so-called impulse charge and deal bonus damage. If you look on your screen just above your dash counter, you'll see a bar that will recharge seemingly at random while you're in combat. This is your impulse charge. When it maxes out, you will gain one impulse charge. When you use an ability that consumes said charge, that ability will do the bonus damage, and you'll notice the bar begin to recharge directly after. There are certain symbols that you can unlock through the Upper Ascension Atlas that will buff your impulse charges and the damage that it does. This isn't something you'll be too worried about as a new player, but it is certainly something that you'll want to be aware of as you become better at the game. Speaking of the Upper Atlas, let's revisit that for a moment. If you've taken the time to look around in your own game, you may have noticed specific nodes called Nodes of Destruction, Creation, or Balance. These are called vectors, and they work in a similar way to the equipment boost that we also discussed in the first episode. By upgrading vectors, you can gain a permanent boost to your stats, and you get to choose which stat you want to boost from a preset list. In order to upgrade a node to gain the stat boost, it requires one of two resources, ether cores or improved ether cores. You can gain normal ether cores by just playing the game, or you could buy improved ether cores off of the market. You can also increase the total rank of nodes that you can have by spending credits to increase that cap. This is just another way to upgrade your character and increase your stats as you play the game. By just unlocking classes, you'll be moving near these vectors as you go. I would suggest taking a moment and picking them up when you get a chance, especially if you have some extra sparks laying around. For now, that summarizes everything you need to know as a new player in regards to class loadouts, impulse damage, and vectors. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments of this video and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. In the next episode, we will be discussing the observatory, what different content you'll find there, and how the tactical situation update works. But until then, we shall see you guys next time.